drank beer. I like beer. I still like beer. Yeah, we drank beer. We drank beer. We like beer. Drinking beer, which I gladly do, which I fully embrace. I think this is sort of ground zero for why so many people mistrust the media, why the New York Times has the nickname for New York Slimes with many people in conservative circles. Um, the Times actually had to run an editor's note following up. How did this vital fact get left out? I don't know why, but I continue to be completely baffled that our so-called free press can continue to put out this absolute garbage fake news and then play the victim when they get called out on it. That was the case yesterday on The Spew, where these two left-wing activists who are pretending to be journalists actually went on the show to defend their hit piece against Kavanaugh, claiming that it was just an innocent mistake. Of course it was. Have you ever noticed how these mistakes and these accidents always work against conservatives and Republicans? They never ever make these mistakes in pursuit of Democrats, but then again, when are they ever pursuing Democrats? We'll get right back to this media meltdown, but first let me just take a quick moment to thank this video's sponsor, RibT.com. Guys, I know that we all need to constantly replace our t-shirts and underwear because we buy them cheap, in bulk, and at department stores. I'm here today to implore you to consider stepping up to a higher quality, immensely more comfortable choice. Not only are they American made, but RibT is a company that values free speech and YouTubers like yours truly. If you need new t-shirts and underwear, and I think we all know that you do, treat yourself and try something that will not not only feel amazing and improve your mood, but will also outlast anything that you bought from a department store. Head on over to ribtcom forward slash drone tech and make sure that you use the promo code drone tech to get 20% off most items. If you would like me to give your channel or your website a shout out, simply make a purchase at ribtcom forward slash drone tech and send me the proof of purchase. Thank you. First of all, there was no desire to withhold important information from our readers. We have all of it in the book and the essay is an adaptation of the book um, that, of course, we had to edit for uh, length and clarity. That's just an outright lie. This is a classic drive-by media con job where the two female journalists have convinced themselves that anything goes in service of pushing their political agenda. The facts that they left out of the story were crucial linchpins to the credibility of the story. One of the main facts that was left out of this story was that their supposed witness had no memory of this alleged event. Considering that they're just trying to sell a book, it's not that surprising that they would leave that out. Now they get to make all their rounds on the TV media to sell their book and to reinforce the narrative that Kavanaugh should be impeached. Which surprisingly comes at the exact time that the Democrats are pushing for impeachment of Kavanaugh. CNN and MSNBC spent a total of 233 minutes pushing this story between September 15th and 16th. When it became clear that this story was a total con job, the media predictably circled the wagons with MSNBC claiming that just because the woman doesn't remember that it happened doesn't mean it never happened. I think that the fact that the woman may have been drunk and not remembered the incident in particular doesn't mean it didn't happen. journalism -y. The network news wasn't any better, with ABC, CBS, and NBC basically ignoring this bombshell with a scant 32 minutes dedicated to the story and almost no coverage whatsoever of the fact that Balsey Ford's main witness said that she doesn't believe what Ford said. Another inconvenient fact to the Democrat media narrative. The thrust of the essay was about, probably a bad word choice. The thrust of the essay was about, probably a bad word choice. Seriously? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a good dirty pun, but coming from a supposed journalist whose credibility is being questioned on a national stage really shows the kind of person that we're dealing with here. Not only is it completely unprofessional, but she's adding to the smear and nationwide embarrassment of Brett Kavanaugh. How does this person still have a job? During the editing process, there was an oversight and this key, this key detail about the fact that the woman herself has told friends she doesn't remember it and has not wanted to talk about it got cut and it was an oversight and the times adjusted it 
and uh, we're very sorry that it happened. How does this person still have a job? How does the most crucial damning fact about your story get edited out? That's no accident. Have you ever noticed that the media always calls it an accident when one of their con jobs is exposed? Remember when NBC News edited audio of a 911 tape so it would fit their narrative? accident or how about when nicole wallace recently claimed that trump wants to exterminate latinos accident why is it always conservatives and republicans who are censored and banned from these social media platforms it's just more accidents funny how all of these accidents seem to serve the same purpose silencing political opposition to the democrats we know that her name was provided to uh, members of the senate and the fbi by a witness named max steyer who is a good governance activist in Washington. So it turns out that the name of this supposed victim was provided to the Democrats in the media by some random guy named Max Steyer. Yeah, it's just some random normal guy who passed this information on to the Democrats, right? He did at one point, I understand, do work for Williams and Connolly. Uh, Why wasn't on that in the piece? Because that, that is, if, if we're talking about credibility. Um, so we didn't see all of that context to be necessary but I understand why you're bringing it up. This hard hitting, principled, certainly not agenda driven journalist didn't think that this tidbit of information was relevant to the story. A story whose main witness rejects the facts, a fact that isn't in the story. You got that? Right before it went to print, you know, I, I we thought we had, yeah. Uh oh, spaghetti! -os. As soon as we realized this, we corrected it, and then and they wrote an editor's note and they restored it. Right, 48 hours after the media had a field day with the story, and only after the story's alleged victim herself publicly rejected the story. It was used for political purposes at the time. It's being used again. For yeah, we're living out a version now. of that right now. Right now, and, we, frankly, you know, it's fine to have a, a series of Democratic candidates calling for impeachment, but that was before the book came out, which is today. Um, and you also have Trump kind of jumping on on things as if we have an agenda which you know that was not our intent <laughs> I'm sure that it's just a complete coincidence that the day before your book comes out, the Democrats and the media begin a narrative of impeaching Kavanaugh. And it's just a total coincidence that your New York Times story removed any facts that were inconvenient to the claims that were being used to advance the impeachment narrative. The media and the Democrats have been exposed coordinating on narratives before. Remember journalist? Most people don't, but it was a private forum that was being used by media members and Democrats to coordinate on talking points like defenses for Obama. This is just more of the same thing. The Democrats and their media are engaged in total war against Trump, his supporters, and the Republican Party. You can guarantee that these sorts of dirty tactics are going to be increasingly used the closer we get to the 2020 election. Continue to come here and watch me expose the media by hitting that subscribe button. And you can continue to support this channel by hitting the like button and sharing the video. If you like my content and you agree with my message, consider donating on PayPal or you can subscribe to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can find all the relevant links in the description or the pinned comment. Thank you.